Hello and welcome. I would like to explain some aspects of multiple access in mobile networks. So what does multiple access mean and why do we have to consider multiple participants to access one resource, one channel? The basic problem in mobile communication is that we have one channel. This channel is basically the air, the air we use for the transmission of the radio waves and this air is our main resource. In other transmission technologies you have the cable as the main resource. This is so to say the room in which the transmission takes place. Or you might have optical fibers, optical fibers in which the light is transmitted such that you can communicate. And in our case of mobile networks we would like to use this channel, the air, as our resource for multiple participants. Not only two participants should be able to communicate via the channel, there should be many participants able to communicate via this channel, via this resource. And therefore we have to think about how to divide this one resource, the air, for multiple participants to use it among several participants. And before we think about different multiple access methods, we should take a glance at different approaches regarding to mobile or wireless networks. So there's first the approach for ad hoc networks. So what does ad hoc network mean actually? Imagine you have several nodes distributed in a certain area and these nodes have a certain communication range. Let's say they can uh, reach their neighbor node or a, a couple of neighbor nodes and then they might be able to form such a network, a mesh network, and they might be able to communicate with each other. And this means ad hoc because it's not a planned infrastructure which you use in this case. You just have nodes popping up with the ability to communicate and then they form such a network. And of course in this case for ad hoc networks you have to think about the mechanisms to set up such a network, to route in the network and maybe also to save energy. There are other aspects as well but these might be problems and we will later also discuss uh, solutions or approaches to solve these problems, to face these challenges. Now as another main type we have the cellular networks. The cellular networks which you also might know from your cell phone, that's where the name comes from and let's have a look how cellular networks are organized. For a cellular network you need a certain infrastructure. For example in GSM networks or higher generation networks like UMTS or LTE you would have base stations distributed in a certain way in the area you want to cover with mobile communication possibility. And then you have around these base stations certain areas which are covered by these base stations. This is one main aspect. You need this infrastructure of base stations in cellular networks. And then you bring into this system your mobile nodes or your user equipment. Let's say the triangle is the user equipment and you would connect to the base station which is the closest to your position. All the other user equipments do the same and then they communicate with the nearest base station. This is basically what happens when you turn on your mobile phone, your smartphone, you connect to the base station closest to you and then you are able to communicate via the LTE or the 3G network. And of course in this case there are also challenges you have to address. For example what happens if the mobile node moves, 
moves in the area of another cell, in the coverage area of another base station, then you somehow have to organize here in this in this border area that the connection from the first base station where the mobile node was connected to before goes into the connection of the second base station. And this is the so-called handover. You hand over the mobile node from one base station to the other. Another problem is how you distribute the base stations in the area you want to cover. If you imagine you have a flat area, then you might need not so much planning. You just position the base stations such that the coverage areas are equally distributed. A different case might be if you, for example, go into a city with skyscrapers, then you might have different propagation scenarios, and that's why you also might need the planning of the network. So this was just a quick view on the terms ad hoc networks and cellular networks to understand the main differences.